Hi guys, Rachel here with The Cackling Moon. Today is a video all about the tarot book club that I am doing and hosting via my Instagram and Facebook ta Talk Tarot With Me group. So, um, we are going to be going through the book 78 Degrees of Wisdom by Rachel Polak. If you want to follow along, you can totally join in at any time. Um, yes, you could use the older version, which is a blue copy. I don't have it around me. Otherwise, I would show you guys. Um, they're both the same thing. Um, but we're going to be basically reading a chapter a week. So <clears throat> this week, we read chapter three, which started on the first three major arcana cards of the, the tarot. Um, and then Monday will be... The start of week two where we'll start on the next set of cards um so if you want the details and everything about the the book club please see my um you could see my instagram post by going to my instagram page you'll see like the photo of me holding up the book <laughs> um or please see my Facebook group. Um if you're join if you joined the Talk Tarot with me Facebook group, you will see it in the announcement section. So go and do that. <laughs> um okay, so I wanted to just kind of open up a discussion about about what I've read so far with this book. I have read this book cover to cover back in 2012. So this is my second go around with it. Um, but I have a whole new perspective with, with this book because I've been reading tarot for about seven years. And when you've read tarot for even one year and you reread a book like this, um, I think it will expand your knowledge and it'll also just give you different ways to look at things that maybe you haven't looked at it in a certain way before. Um, so what I went ahead and did was I put notes, I highlighted things that I felt were super important, but, <laughs> um, I really, I just, I, I literally put notes because there was just so much, there was so much and there's so much information in this book. It's just hard not to, to do that. So, um, let's talk about the fool first, obviously. So we have the fool. If you haven't yet read the first part, um, for week one, you guys can still watch this if you like, but um, I also recommend, I just, I, I recommend you read it because it's so good. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> let me start with like the first thing that I put down. I wish the lighting was better in this room. I apologize. Um, okay. So, one of the main things for The Fool that I really enjoyed about The Fool is... Um, is I put church equals safe haven. Fool equals the daring to go beyond your fears. Um, I, I really, I wrote that note down because it spoke to me when I read that part about the fool. The fool energy being, you have structure with the church, right? The church, dogmatic rules, a way of life, a way of belief. It's closed in, it's structured. There are rules to live by. There's a way to be. And the full spirit or the full energy is more of a free thinker, free person, a free energy. Your mind wanders. You don't limit yourself. You have an open mind, an open heart, and an open soul to do things <coughs> beyond limitations, beyond expectations of life. Um, and so I really that really spoke to me because... Um, the fool has a bad rep. The fool is given the name the fool. People will often portray the fool as a trickster. That's another thing I put down. Um, a joker, a clown. And it's, it's like people look at the fool as somebody who is naive, somebody who is inexperienced and, and, and young or immature <clears throat> but after reading about the fool in this in this different way, I kind of was like able to identify more with the fool energy. To me, it was like it's not just somebody. I mean, the fool can definitely be somebody who's immature, inexperienced in life or in a relationship for sure. Like that's one way you can interpret this card. 
but I liked the idea of the fool is somebody who chooses not to follow along with what everybody else is doing. The fool is somebody who chooses not to live their life in a structured, traditional way. The fool is somebody who dares to do the different thing, who dares to go on another path, to, to embark on the journey of the unknown. Um, and I that really spoke to me because when you're in an everyday setting, one of the biggest things that we struggle with in our life is facing a fear. And, if, and facing a fear in terms of, um, like for example, you're, you feel called to do something else in life, but you've been working at the same job for 20 years. The full energy comes to play where you wanna take that leap of faith of leaving your career of 20 years to embrace a path that comes from your heart, that comes from something that you've been wanting to do forever, but you've just been so afraid to do it. That's the fool energy. That's what fool energy is, is all about. And that's what spoke to me because it's like you're stepping outside of the boundaries. You're stepping outside of your own limitations, but also the limitations that society builds around us as individuals. Um, you're stepping outside of the rules and you're making your own rules. So I like that idea with the fool card. So that was one thing that I put. Um, let's see. I highlighted a lot of stuff in the, in this, in um, the section about the fool, but that was one of the main ones. Um, the other thing I put down is leaping with little planning. So the fool, um, it says, um, um, the fool can often symbolize beginnings, courageously leaping off into some new phase of life, particularly when the leap is taken from some deep feeling rather than careful planning. So oftentimes, like, the fool energy is, is all about taking a leap of faith. It's easy to take a leap of faith when you know what to expect, when you know who or what is going to catch you in the, in the bottom, when you know kind of what to expect. But a true organic fool energy is you're taking a leap without knowing how the hell you're going to make it through. That's genuine fool energy. And so I really liked that too because it's so easy to plan ahead and it's so easy to kind of set up the, the precedence of what we want to do with our lives or with our choices or our relationship or whatever it is. Um, but very often... We, we tend to kind of try to like foresee what's going to happen within the next day or two of, of a big decision. A lot of times we don't take that leap of faith of leaving a career 20 years until we have something lined up to replace it. But an organic full kind of a vibe is like those people who do take a leap without knowing what's going to be next. And those people truly embrace like that full energy. Um, so what I did was when I was going through the book, the yellow is the upright versions of the card and then the, the pink is the reversal. This way it would stick out to me more. And um, out of the reversal, one thing I wrote down was to know when it is best to have no action at all. I love that interpretation of the fool and reversed. Um, because sometimes I, I think of interpretations as the opposite meaning of the upright. That's to me, that's the fastest way to, to memorize it. But I really like that perspective of one, um, one trait of the fool in reversed is to know when no action is necessary. To know when it is okay or safe to not do or say anything at all. Um, because oftentimes the full energy is action related and it's all about moving forward with something or doing it or speaking your truth or taking a leap of faith and, and saying what you need to do, speaking without thinking. But a full in reverse is kind of like that moment where you actually take a pause and you consider what is what is at stake or what is what is necessary in this situation. And sometimes we make that decision that it's better to not say or do anything at all. And I really liked that. Um, I really liked that interpretation. So, <coughs> um, and then I also highlighted the awareness that great chances must be taken only at proper times. So there's a time and place sometimes 
for necessary action. And sometimes it's better to not do anything at all. So I liked that. I liked that interpretation. Okay, so let's talk about the, the, the magician next. Um, the magician was the one that blew my mind the most. I, well, I lied. The high priestess did as well, but the magician really... I was able to kind of read the magician's chapter and have a better understanding of what he's all about because this was one of the cards that I struggled with when I was first learning the tarot. Um, the magician was very hard for me to remember the interpretation of. So now that I was like, now that I'm like going at it at a different, <laughs> at a different time in my journey, I seem to have had a breakthrough. Um, so of course the magician resembles a teacher or a wise man. Um, they represent conscious action, um, and creating something or manifesting something with your life. So, I, you know, you think of a magician and you, you, and obviously they're doing magic tricks or, um, but I always see the magician as like a manipulator, a positive manipulator of energy. You are, he's, he has like law of attraction written all over him, right? So when you're actively doing something good for yourself, for an outcome, or you're trying to achieve a specific goal, that's what the magician energy is. Um, but something that really intrigued me, one of the first ones I put is <coughs> making something out of uh, out of our potential, making something out of our potentials. Um, uh, bringing our ideas and dreams to life. And so sometimes the magician gets a bad rep. And I read that in the book where sometimes like they compare him to like the wizard or like a, a um, <laughs> so like when you're looking in terms of like the Bible and, 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 you know, the Bible deeming wizards and witchery and all that as evil, oftentimes being a magician is looked at as evil. <clears throat> and in the book's perspective, it was like, the church wants structure. The church wants you to live and think and breathe a certain way, the way they want you to do it, right? So they instill that fear in you of you need to ab abide by these rules, these laws in order to be able to go to heaven. And and a magician energy is somebody who, who sees that and they say, well, no, I can do it for do for myself what I want to create in my life, in my world, in my reality. And so the magician is taking into consideration the, the that they have their own physical ability to make their dreams a reality. And a lot of times the church looks at that as evil or they say it's evil because it's supposed to be God's way. Um or their way <laughs> do you see you guys kind of see what I mean so when I read that I was like oh my gosh like that makes so much sense um so then I, I also highlighted that the magician he is the light he is a lightning rod okay there's a bolt of lightning going through him the bolt of lightning being your 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 passion for life that zest for life right by opening himself up to the spirit he draws it down into himself so his hand being raised up in the air to the spirit right um and then bringing it down into himself and then that downward hand the this, the hand pointing towards the earth um is like a lightning rod buried in the ground runs the energy into the earth into reality so he's bringing from what is above in spirit or you could say like in his subconscious down into his consciousness or his reality so he is the middleman. He is the medium between spirit world and reality or earth. So I like that too. I was kind of like, oh, okay. So looking at the magician as kind of like not just a creator or not just a, you know, a, a, a manifester of of your dreams and desires, but he's also kind of a medium in, in, in that way too. The middleman. Um, another one I put is relying on faith to fill the void or create our own reality for ourselves, which is what I was just saying, where when you go the route of having a strong faith and you're going to church and you're believing in a certain law of God, you are instilling, you, you're, you're, you're choosing to fill the voids, your loneliness, your need for something, your, the need for the truth the need for answers, the need for guidance through church, 
People will fill the voids, their loneliness, their, their desires for answers and all of the above by going to church. But with the magician card, it's also representing the power of yourself. You take initiative for yourself. You take initiative to manifest your, your dreams into reality, to fill your own cup, to fill your own void, right? And I love that because it's like, to me, it's like you're not using church or your beliefs or your faith or your spirituality or whatever as a crutch. It's also like you're being, you're being able to physically be present for yourself. So that was powerful to me. That spoke to me a lot. <laughs> um, so this is the part where I put, I put a lot of notes. I had, a, I had notes that I had to like write down. Um, so I put, you get what you want because you direct your energy into getting it. You get what you want because you direct your energy into getting it. You manifest it. You are utilizing the law of attraction. When you want something in your life and you want it that badly, you're going to do what you can or what you want to do or what you need to do to obtain it. You are making your dreams a reality. That's part of the magician energy. Um, and then I also wrote down, people rarely act. They react. Not doing but complaining and seeing the negatives only. So a lot of times that's so true, like instead of acting, instead of taking action or taking initiative in your life, it's so much easier for us to sit and complain and dwell on the negatives and dwell on the things that we don't like about ourselves or our situation or our relationship or our job, whatever it is. And so we react to these negatives instead of acting on them. So if there's something in your life or about yourself or your relationship or your job that you want to change... Rather than reacting to those negative things, acting on it or taking action, taking initiative is what the magician is about. If you don't like it, change it. If you don't like your relationship, change it or fix it or do something to, to fix it. You know what I mean? Don't just become stagnant. Don't just become crippled to your life. Um, another thing I wrote down is not grounding the lightning, idle hands, not living your true purpose creates depression and negative reality. So when you have all this passion, energy, this, this life purpose, this need to do something with your life, and then you become stagnant and you become, um, unmotivated and you don't do anything with yourself and you just come in, you, 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 you it's kind of like you, you. You're, a switch goes off and you become depressed. That's a negative. That's a, 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 a magician in reverse. You're so stagnant. You have all this powerful zest for love and a desire to do something with your life, but you just don't have a, the physical energy to do it. It's That is what creates the depression in you, the anxiety in you, the panic in you, the, the, the inability to focus. And uh, to me, that spoke to me because I was just like, that's so true. Like a lot of times um, it's easy to point fingers and blame, you know, certain things or people or the past for our depression or for our inability to achieve things. But sometimes in reality, it's us. We're just refusing to take action or we forget how to take action or we need a, an extra push in that direction. Um, so for some of the reversals, I wrote down negative results of not grounding the lightning. So you're not grounding, you're not doing much with that passion for life. You, you have the passion for life, but you're not putting it to use. You're not, you're not living up to your true potential. It creates depression. It creates, um, stagnancy. It creates your, literally like your life, a battle. And that's what I wrote, um, meant, and uh, it, it, it turns into kind of like a depression, like a, your inability to focus, your inability to do anything with yourself when we're meant to always be creating. Um, there's a part also in here where they talk about people who are schizophrenic. Um, and they talk about how people are, we're, we're we are, we are taught to medicate ourselves, um, to seek help when we are not normal. Um, and so I wrote that down. I wrote mental illness versus enlightenment that sometimes these people that are dealing with 
mental illness in a certain in certain degrees um, are often looked at as people who are not worthy or they are in some what cases sometimes like back in the back in the old days the church would deem those people as as possessed or evil or um, they're not of God or they're not of the light because they're not normal right and it spoke to me when I read that because I was like, that's so true. Like we are quick to just take a pill. I'm going to make me feel better because I'm not like that person. I'm not like you guys. So give me medicine to make me better. But does it really make you better or does it, or does it like add a layer to you? And so I'm one of those people, like it's a real touchy subject, but I'm one of those people where I feel like mental illness, like schizophrenia, autism, different things like that, these disabilities, um, I feel like it's a sign, it's a, it's, a, it's a way of a person having an expanded mind. They are open, they're more open than we are. <laughs> and they're, they're often misunderstood and they are often mistreated and they are often um, diagnosed and given medicine to bring them back down when they're already vibing really, really high, much, much higher than we are. So we can't understand it because we're not at that level. And, and it's funny because in, in the book, they talked about shamanism, <laughs> how in other countries, it says several writers have commented on the relationship between shamanism and what the West calls schizophrenia. Shamans are often not so much chosen as found if in our culture, a young person experiences visions, fearful hallucinations, we do not know what to do with such experiences other than to try and stop them by drugs and self-control. But in other cultures, such people receive training. This is not to say that madness does not exist or is not recognized in archaic cultures. Rather, the training is meant to prevent madness by channeling the experiences into a productive direction. So... <clears throat> I liked that because there's other cult cultures out there that see, they don't see, they don't see schizophrenia or people who hear things or see things or hallucinate or whatever as a taboo, you know, they don't see them as broken people. They see them uh, honestly, like they're more open, they're more enlightened. And at least that's the way I see it as mental, mental illness versus enlightenment. And I really liked that. I thought that that was really a different way to see the magician and to appreciate the magician in that way. And lastly, the high priestess. So um, the high priestess, I... The high priestess could be her own book. Like there's so much, there is so much information on her. And this book literally goes in depth of all of the symbolism from the pillars, what the letters mean, the Torah, like everything. So I, I encourage you guys to read it. It's so good. Um, but one thing I wrote down as a side note for the high priestess is to go beyond the veil, we must go into our subconscious. And then I put shadow self with a question mark. So is the subconscious, is the high priestess, our subconscious, obviously she is, but is the high priestess a reflection of our shadow self, of the darkness? You have the light and then you have darkness. You have darkness and light. Um, you have that those pillars. It's a balance. We as people, as humans, need a balance of darkness and light. We need good and evil. We need good and bad, positive and negative. It's just how we're built. But I feel like the high priestess to go through the veil and the veil being the curtain behind her. In order to see what is beyond that, you have to be willing to go deep inside yourselves. And not everybody will achieve that in their lifetime. Some people in this lifetime will. Those of us who want to heal, who want to see what else is out there. Those of us who question beyond the structure of the church, the structure of society. Those are the people who get to see what's behind the veil. But some people don't want to because they're fearful or they don't know how or they're not ready to do it. So I thought that was really, really intriguing. And, <clears throat> and they, the, in the book, it says you can see, you can peek through behind the veil. And what it is is water. And in the tarot, water equals emotions, intuition, the heart. And that's why I'm saying like, I feel like the veil, what is on the other side of the veil is your shadow self, 
your emotions, everything that you bottle up, everything that you hide, your feelings, your thoughts, the dark parts of yourselves. We all have it. Um, <clears throat> so that was really intriguing to me. And then, of course, I, I highlighted some stuff for the um, her reversal. And um, the one of the reversals that I liked was um, negatively, the Trump indicates passiveness at the wrong time or for too long. So to become passive, they said passive with the high priestess is you're you are taking a break from life to go inner in, inward to to focus on the self right when sometimes we need to take a break from reality and deal with ourselves sometimes we need to take a hiatus from work sometimes we need to take a vacation from life right that's that's what they mean by passivity but sometimes people become so like obsessed with the passive life the fantasy that they forget to come back to reality and that is a reversal of the high priestess so the high priestess is like telling you to go deep within, tap into the darker side of yourself, the healing, right? But there's also a darkness within that, too much healing. And some people do deal with that. Some people struggle with too much healing, too much inner work, too much focus, that they lose sight of reality, the tangible. They lose sight of actually taking initiative and making their life something that they want because they're too much in dream world. So it's really, really, that was really intriguing to me because there is a darkness to even the most beautiful thing as forgiveness or as healing. And I was like, holy shit, that makes so much sense. So I liked that. <laughs> and then the other thing, the other note I wrote here was to lose sense of yourself. Um, the card reversed signifies a turn towards passion, towards a deep involvement with life and other people in all ways, emotionally, sexually, and competitively. However, the pendulum can swing too far. And then the card reversed can symbolize a loss of that most precious knowledge, the sense of our inner selves. So it's like you, you become so engrossed with the deep stuff. You're so engrossed with the darkness and like the healing and, and escape, escapism, right? That you don't want to go back to reality, that you become stagnant in your life, that you stop taking care of yourself. There's no more good hygiene. There's no more, you're not eating healthy anymore. You're not taking care of yourself. You, you lose your job. You, you disconnect from family. You're just not social. You're just hiding in a recluse, that kind of thing. You are in a, in a, like unable to take care of the self. That's what that means. And that was deep because that just shows a very dark, a very, very dark side to what could actually be a beautiful healing process. So it's it's a fine line that you can, you know, tread. And I don't think a lot of people talk about that. <laughs> I think a lot of times we talk about how amazing it is to heal from the past or to to go through inner work. But I think a lot of us fail to recognize that there can be a little bit too much of that. And you can become too dependent on even that. So really, really interesting. It was like, it opened my eyes and it was just like really, I, I really enjoyed it. So <laughs> I got a lot out of that first chapter. Um, I would love to hear you guys, um, your perspective. So if you're reading along, <clears throat> please um, comment in the post on my Instagram or also on the Facebook group. Um, because I would love to hear your perspectives on it. So the next week on Monday, we're going to be starting chapter four and we'll be diving into, um, I believe we'll be diving into the Empress, the Emperor, um, the Hierophant, which will be really interesting to read. Um, the Lovers, Strength. It's a big chapter. We're going to get through a lot of cards in this next chapter. So it's a chunky chapter, but like I said, I give a whole week to read it all. Um, and so I think that it will be, I think it'll be okay. Like, I think we'll get through it. Yeah. So it's going to be from page 43 to 108. No, 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 nope. I did it I'm too far ahead of myself. Sorry, guys. 
That would be a, a big chapter. <laughs> we are going to read... Oh my gosh, I guess I should, I'll just... Oh, from page 43 to 70 or 69. So we're going to get through um, the Empress through the Chariot. So those are the next groups of cards that we're going to be reading on. So... Um, and I feel like a week is, is more than enough time to get through like 20 to 40 pages in a book. Um, if, especially if you're like reading a, a piece by piece, like each day. Um, so I'm a pretty slow reader and I can get through it. So I figured if I can get through it, then it shouldn't be that bad. <laughs> um, but it's really interesting and I hope that you guys are enjoying it. I would love to hear your input on what you've read so far. Sorry if I felt if the video felt like I was just kind of pulling things left and right. I really didn't know how I wanted to kind of do the video. I just wanted to just have an open discussion. Um, but yeah, so love to hear your thoughts. Let me know and I will be posting on Monday the next prompt for the, like the, the next chapter and what we're going to be reading and all of that. So um, keep the look at, keep on the lookout for that. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and I will talk to you guys later. Bye loves.